My husband, 35-year-old male, and I, 30-year-old female, have been together for six years and married for five. I married him because he was very patient and strong, uh, thoughtful, a great listener, and very romantic. He didn't have a good stable job, but his character is what I was looking for in a partner. I was already stable in my career at this point. We got married and a switch flipped. We were supposed to use the wedding gift money for our honeymoon. But when we went out for dinner, he asked me to pay for it. $200. Mind you, he decided to order the most expensive wine they had. I don't know what he did with the rest of the wedding money. I never asked. I was confused and felt sick to my gut, but I paid. A monster came out. I remember the first time he screamed at me. I asked him if he turned his auto insurance back on when he came back from a work trip. And he started screaming at me and banging on the steering wheel. I learned he did not like being questioned. The lash-outs continued frequently throughout our marriage for what I believe are very minor things that should be easily talked through. I remember after we got married, he portrayed me as a crazy, insecure person to my parents while we were eating dinner. I got so stiff and red, I couldn't move or breathe. I was so humiliated. He said it was just a joke. We went to go visit my brother. We were all drinking and he would speak poorly of me and how I don't care about him and nothing he ever does is good enough. He expressed to my brother that he's going to school for me and I'm never satisfied with him. I tried to explain that this was absolutely not true, but he did not let me speak, but was venting like a drunk child about how horrible I am. I spoke to him the next morning about how I felt and he said he didn't mean anything by it and it wouldn't happen again. We visited my brother a couple more times and it happened again. One time we bickered about something small at the airport bar. He had one beer and I didn't drink anything. I thought it was done, but we moved to the gate waiting area where there were a bunch of people and he started berating me in front of everyone. He was telling me that I only care about myself and that I'm a gold digger. I still make double of what he makes. I noticed that everyone seated around us stopped talking. I tried to tell him quietly to stop, but when he gets into this weird zone, there's no stopping him. There's a switch that flips in his head and this evil man comes out to destroy me. Whenever we travel anywhere to meet my family, we tend to have these kinds of episodes. I told him I have a hard time enjoying the trip with my family when he does these things, but he continues. There was a time we went to a restaurant and had what I thought was a friendly debate, and it turned into him berating me in the restaurant. My typical reaction is to stay quiet because I'm so embarrassed and trying not to make a scene. When we left, he tried to keep scolding me, and I decided to walk away. He grabbed me by the arm and yanked me back. There are other things, but what do you think is going on? He is nice sometimes if there is no stress involved. But when there is stress or he doesn't get his way, he is very unpleasant. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You married an hurtful individual who was able to maintain the facade for a year. Most people can do so. That is why you should not marry someone you have only known for a year. You mentioned that he is sweet and gives you hope occasionally. All right, let's assume he is sweet even 90% of the time. If I gave you a hamburger and informed you that it contained 90% beef and 10% dog feces, would you still eat it? No relationship is flawless, but what you are describing is abuse. Leave the relationship. Comment 2. You are not the first person to make the mistake of believing that the kind person is the true representation, while the rest can be compartmentalized or switched off. It is all the same individual. This is who he truly is. On some level, he believes he is superior to you and that if the evidence proves otherwise, or he feels any dissatisfaction, it is your fault. Please leave him. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking with me. Things have been rough. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, they did. The other day, my husband lost his job. He said it was because of downsizing, but I overheard a call where his boss mentioned something about missing funds. I didn't want to believe it, but it made me think about the wedding gift money that vanished. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. Then my mom called. She was upset because she found out that my husband had borrowed money from her without telling me. He said it was for a surprise for our anniversary, but that was months ago, and there was no surprise. I felt betrayed. He had lied to me and used my mom. 
I confronted him and he just shrugged it off, saying it was no big deal. I was at my wit's end. I talked to my best friend, who's known me since we were kids. She reminded me of how I used to be so independent and strong. She said she barely recognized me now, always anxious and walking on eggshells around my husband. It hit me hard. I realized I had changed, and not for the better. The next day I found a bank statement that wasn't supposed to be there. It showed a secret account with a lot of money in it. Money that could have been from his job or my mom or even the wedding gifts. I felt sick. I had to make a choice. Do I confront him and risk another outburst? Or do I stay quiet and try to find out more? I decided to dig deeper. I remembered how he'd always take his phone with him, even to the bathroom. So when he was in the shower, I checked his phone. There were messages to someone about money and meeting up. My heart was pounding. I put the phone back before he could notice. That night, we were supposed to go to my cousin's birthday party. I didn't want to go, but I didn't want to let my family down. We went and at first everything was fine, but then he started drinking and the mean comments came out. He said things about how I was holding him back and how I didn't appreciate him. I tried to ignore him, but it was hard. On the way home, he was driving erratically. I begged him to slow down, but he just laughed. Then out of nowhere, he slammed on the brakes. We were in the middle of nowhere and he told me to get out. I was scared, but I refused. He got out and came around to my door, yanking it open. I thought he was going to drag me out, but instead, he threw something at me. It was the bank statement I had found. He knew I had seen it. He got back in the car and drove off, leaving me there. I was alone, in the dark, with no idea where I was. I felt so many things at once. Anger, fear, shame. I eventually got a ride back from a passing car. When I got home, he wasn't there. I packed a bag with my essentials. I couldn't stay there anymore. I went to my friend's house, the one who's always been there for me. She welcomed me with open arms. The next morning, I went to the bank and talked to someone about the account. They couldn't tell me much, but they confirmed that the money had been coming in for a while. It was clear that my husband had been hiding things from me for a long time. I'm staying with my friend for now. I've started looking for a lawyer to figure out what my options are. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I can't go back to living like I was. It's going to be hard, but... I have to stand up for myself. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for breaking into my own house to retrieve my belongings from my gaming addicted ex? I was married to my ex-husband for six years before he asked for a separation. He has always been very bad with keeping up with himself, slash bills, slash the house. And if he doesn't want to do something, he will completely ignore that it needs to be done. I managed most of the bills, the few he did were either late sometimes or were on auto pay, cleaned the house, cooked most of the meals, and took care of our animals including vet visits, grooming visits, etc. I also worked a part-time job while he worked full-time, but my jobs were always physical, while his is a niche desk job. I understand mental exhaustion versus physical exhaustion, but he believed whoever made less money was responsible for most of the housework, so I did it for six years. I think it's also important to state that he has a severe gaming addiction. He will sit on the computer for several hours at a time, sometimes not moving for 12 plus hours, even to eat or use the restroom. I competed with a computer for attention. Anything outside of the game doesn't matter when he's in the chair. He missed several family events and life events because he had told his friends he would be online. I doubt we'd be divorced if I didn't handle all the paperwork and appointments. When he started asking for a separation, I was shocked. I had made it my life's purpose to be a good wife. A few weeks after I was made to leave, however, I realized just how much BS I had been dealing with, and I was grateful he had opened my eyes. A couple months later, I asked if I could get more of my things, since I was told to only take enough for a month or so, because he may want me back. I took a few friends and relatives to help me pack up my belongings, but I was overwhelmed after a few hours of him following me around. He told me that I didn't have to get it all that day, and I would be welcome back to finish. That's the thing. I haven't been allowed back inside. It's been almost a year and I still have heirlooms that I didn't think to grab. He will leave a couple of things outside that I didn't ask for each time I ask for my things and then refuse to answer the door. My friends and mom say I need to contact a lawyer, but he also left me with so much debt that I almost want to just let him have what I left 
even if they are meaningful to me. I wish I'd grabbed them the first time, but I honestly didn't think he would refuse to let me in again. His family is also loaded, so he could definitely hire a better lawyer. I'm also pregnant. I met a wonderful man after I left who has shown me what a partner can be. And while I don't want to add stress right now, I also had tons of baby clothes and items that I bought over the years I was with my husband that would be useful. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, the problem is figuring out what the things are worth. My ex did the exact same thing to me, and even with the lawyer, the advice was to let the items go because it would cost me another $10,000 just to fight for a few inherited items. Sometimes the police will escort you to get items back, but not always, it might be worth asking. Comment two, do you still have any mutual friends or family you're both friendly with that you could ask to grab your things for you? Otherwise, I would tell him he needs to give you X, Y, and Z by a certain date, or you'll be involving the police and then report them as stolen. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around. So much has happened since my last post, and I've got to get this off my chest. Just when I thought things couldn't get messier, they did. I made a mistake. A big one. I thought I could sneak into the house while he was at work to grab my things, including those baby clothes I mentioned. But guess what? He changed the locks. I should have seen it coming. He's always been one step ahead in this twisted game of his. I was standing there, key in hand, feeling like a fool. My neighbor saw me struggling with the door and must have called him because the next thing I knew, he was there, livid, accusing me of trying to break in. The situation escalated so quickly and before I knew it, the police were involved. I tried to explain, but it just made things worse. They didn't arrest me, but they warned me not to come near the house again. I was humiliated, standing there on the lawn we used to take care of together, surrounded by officers and nosy neighbors. It was a new low. My friends were furious when they heard, saying I should have listened and gotten a lawyer right away. But with the baby on the way and the mountain of debt he left me with, I was trying to avoid more bills. Speaking of the baby, my current partner has been a rock through all this. He's been pushing me to fight for what's mine, but I'm torn. The stress of this whole ordeal is taking its toll, and I'm worried about the baby's health. I can't afford to let this situation consume me, but it's not just about the stuff anymore. It's about respect about standing up for myself after years of being pushed aside. My mom reminded me of that when she said, you can't let him win, not after everything you've been through. So I swallowed my pride and reached out to a lawyer, a friend of a friend who offered to help pro bono. We were building a case, gathering evidence of my ownership of the items left in the house. It was a slow process, but I was hopeful. Then out of nowhere, he filed a restraining order against me, said I was a threat to his safety. Can you believe that? After everything I did for him, he painted me as the villain. It was a slap in the face, a betrayal that cut deeper than the separation itself. The court date was set and I was a bundle of nerves. My lawyer assured me we had a strong case, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something would go wrong. And it did. He showed up with his own lawyer and someone from his family's deep pockets and they twisted the story, made it seem like I was the unstable one. The judge sided with him. I was ordered to stay away, and just like that, any hope of getting my belongings back vanished. I was crushed. It felt like I was being punished for years of dedication and love. I poured into that marriage. Now I'm trying to move on, to focus on the new life growing inside me, but it's hard. Every baby outfit I buy, every toy I pick up, I'm reminded of what I lost of the future I had planned that's now just a pile of dust. I'm trying to stay positive, to be grateful for the good man by my side and the baby on the way. But some days it's just really hard. I'm learning that sometimes, no matter how much you fight, you can't always fix the past. You just have to find a way to live with it. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for telling everyone my husband cheated and giving him a second chance only to find out he's still lying? I. 24-year-old female, and my husband, 25-year-old male, were in a long-distance relationship for two years. We are Muslim. So we were nikafid, which means we were married on paper but had yet to wait to have our ruksati, which is when the girl officially moves in with her husband and is considered married. 
We were doing long distance, as he was in his final two years of medical school, in a different state, and I was about to commence my master's degree, so I could only move to his state, move in with him after completing my master's, and after he also completed medical school. Things between us were great, and we were in a perfectly healthy relationship. But of course, long distance comes with its challenges, so occasionally there were minor disagreements regarding not giving each other enough time, etc. For the most part, however, we were both madly in love and eagerly planning our wedding in the year's time. Unfortunately, life veers away from the plans we make, and sometimes we get betrayed by the ones we thought we never would. Earlier this year, I had a random woman message me on Instagram to tell me that she and my husband had been sleeping together for the past seven, eight months after meeting on Tinder. She said that he had told her he just got out of a relationship and was deeply apologetic to me, saying she would never have been with him if she had known he was married. After I confronted my husband with all the evidence, he had no choice but to admit that it was true. This was followed by crying and pleading for another chance, saying it was a mistake. Needless to say, I was extremely heartbroken and my world felt like it had collapsed beneath my feet. I was furious, so I decided to message all of his family and friends, approximately 20 people in total, and tell them he cheated on me, sending them screenshots of the girl's messages to me. They were all deeply apologetic to me, and they all cut him off. One of his friends also told me he had a history of cheating. Eventually, the word got around to all of his social circles and his medicine cohort and everyone cut him off and started treating him differently. I had decided straight away that I no longer wanted to continue the marriage. However, after months of him crying and begging for a chance to make things right, I decided to give him another chance, as he was deeply remorseful and promised to make amends. However, he is now extremely depressed that his reputation has been ruined in his social and professional circles, and that he has no friends and everyone looks down on him I am now also really starting to feel the guilt that I've done this to him. And it hurts me to see him this way, especially because he often shifts blame onto me, saying I'm the reason for all of it. TLDR. I was in a long distance marriage, waiting to live together after finishing our studies. I found out my husband cheated for seven, eight months after being contacted by the other woman. I confronted him and he admitted it. I was heartbroken and furious. So I decided to message all of his family and friends, approximately 20 people, to tell them, and they all cut him off. Despite initially deciding to end the marriage, I gave him another chance after his remorse and desperate pleading. He's now extremely depressed about losing his social and professional circles and often blames me for ruining his reputation. I'm now starting to feel really guilty. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, your husband ruined his own reputation by having an affair for eight months. Instead of accepting this, he's trying to shift blame. This is his fault, not yours. Actions have consequences. He decided to screw around and hurt you. I'd be reminding him that he chose to do that and if he keeps trying to shift blame, you'll end the marriage because he needs to accept that you didn't do a single thing wrong. You know why some cheaters keep doing it? Because there aren't any consequences. Comment two, I'm sorry this happened to you, but let's be a bit harsh. He cheated on you for a long time. He was on Tinder, so doubt it was only once. He has a history of this, and he blames you for his consequences, which is only people seeing his actions and responding accordingly. You deserve better. You need to put yourself first. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since I last wrote. So, after I decided to give my husband another chance, things took a turn. His depression got worse, and he started seeing a therapist. I thought maybe this was a step in the right direction, you know? But then, I found out he was lying about the therapy sessions. He wasn't going to any therapist. Instead, he was meeting up with the same woman he cheated on me with. I couldn't believe it. I felt like such a fool for trusting him again. I was so angry, I packed my bags and went to stay with a friend. But then my husband showed up at my friend's place, begging me to come back, saying it was all a misunderstanding. He claimed that he only met with her to end things properly. I didn't know what to believe. My friend told me to kick him to the curb 
but I just couldn't. I still loved him, despite everything. I went back home with him, and things were okay for a while. But then, the woman he cheated with messaged me again. She was pregnant. She said it was my husband's child. My world came crashing down again. I confronted him, and after a lot of denials, he finally admitted it could be true. He said it happened before we got back together, but that didn't make it any better. I was ready to leave for good this time, but my family got involved. They said we should try to work things out for the sake of our marriage and the baby. They said it was the right thing to do. I felt pressured, so I agreed to stay and try to make it work, but it's hard. Every day is a struggle. I see him texting and I wonder if he's talking to her. I hear a baby crying on TV and I think about the child that's coming, the one that's his but not mine. It's like a constant reminder of his betrayal. And now he's been offered a job in another state. A fresh start, he says. He wants us to move, to leave everything behind and begin anew. I'm torn. Part of me wants to go, to leave all the whispers and judgmental looks behind. But another part of me is, is scared. What if he cheats again? What if we move and I'm just as isolated and alone there as I am here? I agreed to the move, though. Maybe it's fear of being alone, or maybe it's hope that things will actually be different this time. I don't know, but I'm going with him. I'm trying to be optimistic, but deep down I'm terrified. I'm walking into this new chapter with my eyes wide open, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm making a huge mistake. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.